Hey folks, what's good? Welcome back to the show. I'm your host, Darren Harris. This is Darren Harris Program, like the man said up front. What's happening? How you feeling this week? Hopefully good. Hopefully your mental health was on task. I had I had a stumble. I had a stumble this week. I had a really bad Sunday. But I was able to get a grip on it and pull myself together to have... Uh, I guess a good Tuesday is when I started having started feeling a little, a little bit better. So I'm back in the saddle, feeling a little good, feeling a little great, feeling a little grand. If I was any better, I would be twins. So let's get into it. What do Smithfield Foods, Pebble Beach Golf Links, and the Anheuser-Busch Corporation have in common? Any ideas? Anybody? Anybody? Somebody? Anybody? They're all American companies that were sold to foreign countries. Iconic American brands that were sold to other countries. So today, we're going to check out the tangled web of global commerce (laughs) and the effects that it has on the American identity. We're going to check out some concerning shit too like with all the selling of these american brands and even american property some people are kind of concerned about a lot of things national security being one of them so let's get into it we're going to start by Just looking at some brands, just looking at some of these brands that have sold to these foreign countries and well, really what and what it does. Well, it it, it tends to do a couple of things. One thing that it does is it alters the cultural landscape. You hear me, folks? It alters our cultural landscape or the American cultural landscape. The other thing it does, it also raises questions about economic sovereignty and the potential loss of influence on the global stage. It's a pretty big deal. I mean, what are the economic impacts when we do this? When America sells its its legacies, You know, it's claim to fame. They're iconic brands. It's, it's, I mean, it's cool at first. All right, cool. We're going to sell fucking Budweiser for $826 million, whatever, whatever they sold it for. There's a problem that there, there could be a really big problem with that, with selling these brands, some of these brands. Can fuck the job market up here in the United States? What happens? What happens when some of these com- companies that have been bought by other countries close shop here and or give jobs to their people? <laughs> so to speak. What do we do? What happens? I'll tell you what happens. It fucks with the economic stability of the United States is what happens. Just because somebody wanted to make a few hundred million dollars. That's cool. I mean, what if you worked at one of these places, you know, a long time and you developed a lot of great shit, you know, you moved up the ladder, but then the company was sold and everything you worked on is not your property or you lose your intellectual property. There's all kinds of shit that could happen when companies sell 
just sell sell themselves to, to other people, other countries, I mean. And that's just one aspect. We're also talking about land. There's a foreign land grab, if anybody didn't realize. Now, before you get all, oh, ha, ha, I'm not anti-foreigner, okay? <laughs> That's not me. But it is concerning. It is concerning. Especially the land part. The land part is very concerning to me. And the reason why that is, is because anybody can own land in the United States. Anybody. Including our enemies. You follow me? Are you following me? Including our enemies. That's, that's heavy. That's, I mean, that's something to really consider. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, we sell off American icons. But when we start selling land, also our land, we're really kind of selling our country from underneath ourselves. I, I've, I've been thinking about this for a long time. I've been thinking about this for a long time. Because here we are. Here we are, and I hate to bring it up. You know, I've, I've been speaking about, you know, this you know, conflict that's going on all over the world and war, war, war everywhere you look. But I think about it because, you know, there's, there's, like I said, there's, there's foreign nationals that not only own companies, but they also own land, like large amounts of it. I think I said in a podcast previously, China, China, they own over 300,000 acres of American land and climbing and climbing. Yeah, <laughs> it's a lot. You know what else they own? Smithfield Foods. They own the pork industry, the entire pork industry. I think I said that on a previous podcast also. Now, we ain't been the most friendly with China, and they we just been cool with each other. It's not like we're allies or anything like that. We don't have that relationship with them. For a lot of different reasons. We're just not them people. But if it ever came down to it, I mean, holy shit, how, how easy. I mean, they have access to some of our food supply here in the country. There's a lot of discretion that should be used, I believe, when making these large business decisions. Well, who the fuck are you? I'm fucking nobody, really. I'm just the guy who eats fucking ham sandwiches from time to time. But even with that, you can never know if they're safe anyway, because a few episodes ago, I did some, you know, did an episode about the food quality in America, which is shit. They're trying to kill us on every front. But it does make me think about all these brands that have that 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 grew here in America, that were created and grew here in America. And because I mean, I guess I mean, what would you do? I mean, what what would you do? Would you sell it? I mean, would you keep it? You know, if you were the owner of I don't know, you were the owner of Ford or Chevy, 
and somebody came along and offered you $300 billion, what would you do? Would you? I mean, I know a lot of people, I sell it for the $300 million. You'd sell a classic American icon for 300 grand. Now, I've had some beef with the country. <laughs> if you've listened to some of my previous podcasts, then you would know that Darren Harris has some beef with the United States on many different fronts, the political front, the racial front. I got some beef with the United States, but that does not negate the fact that I fucking live here. I live here. I got to go to the stores and buy the food. I got to do a lot of the things. And we out fucking around in other parts of the world, fucking with people while they're over here fucking with our food. I think we might need to think about some shit. Who we sell our shit to. And by the way, the United States owns zero property in China. Like none. <laughs> Not that I know of. Because you can't buy it. Americans can't buy it. And I think it's just foreigners in general, foreign nationals in general can't buy land in China. You can't buy land in China. And that's a shame too because China has some beautiful, beautiful like places. I've seen like some TikTok videos of some Chinese places. I would really love to go. But I'm afraid TikTok videos are as close as I'm going to get to these places. <laughs> but they're cool as shit, though. It'd be cool to be allies with them. You know what I mean? It'd be cool to be cool with everybody. It would be cool for motherfuckers to get along, wouldn't it be? Then we wouldn't have to worry about it. Right now, I mean, I know a lot of Americans aren't, but a lot of Americans are. We're worried about the global conflict that's going on right now in the Middle East and also over in the Ukraine, along with the people that are really backing these wars. These are, It's just really, this is like the undercard fight to the main event. And that's, I don't want to, I, I don't want to fucking be here. I really wish some aliens would come right now and like, like, I don't know, like, blow some dust in our eye, you know, just distract our focus for, oh, shit, aliens. I wish that would happen here in the United States because, I mean, it would, it would help us get our fucking heads out of our ass. And not just the United States, the whole world. It would help us get our heads out of our ass. It really would. I just, I really wish that would happen. I just, I, I wish that, but... But that's for another podcast. And you know what? I think I might do some alien shit soon because I got some special feelings about some aliens. <laughs> and if you know me, you know what the fuck I'm talking about. But um, it's just a lot of shit, man. It's a lot of shit that we in this country don't really consider. Because, I mean, like the people in China, they consider shit. They consider shit so much so that it's like fucking oppression over there. They consider everything. And then they, they make the decisions accordingly. We we shoot from the fucking hip here. You know, if you can do it, do it. If you can get away with it, get away with it. And that's how it is here. You know, it's you know, if you can if you can make a fast buck, then make the fast buck. Everything here is about money. It's about money, money money and more money it's always about money it's never about about us about the about us it's never about whether or not you're an upstanding it's it's not you'll sell i mean for so much money you will sell i mean people say oh i would never do that i mean psh, everybody's got a fucking price i believe and some of these companies they couldn't help it you know i'm one dude and you're offering me man, and I don't have to come to this motherfucker no more? <laughs> Nobody else is offering me that shit here from the United States. or you know, Nobody's offering me that here. This shit's been up for sale. I, I would have sold it to these motherfuckers, but these motherfuckers won't buy it, and guess what? I'm going to sell it, and then I'm never, 
going to be heard from again. I'm going to go lay on a beach somewhere or live at the top of a mountain somewhere or blast off into fucking space or whatever the fuck I want to do. Because I sold my company for a hundred kajillion dollars. I don't even think, I mean, there's so many, God, there's, I mean, not countries, but there's so many companies that that we lost that I don't, I don't want to say we lost because some of it is still we still get it but it's just not an american company anymore it's very hollow and you would be surprised at some of the companies that have just all of a sudden i, I don't want to say jump ship they just changed ownership but not they're just not a, they're not american companies anymore they're not american companies anymore they're no longer, and in my, in my, they're no longer really part of America's legacy. They become part of someone else's or another country's legacy. Now, I also have a problem with the uh, with the American legacy and the shit that has happened here. I have a problem with that. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I live here. I live here. I was born here. Okay. So for all intents and purposes, for whatever you want to call it, I guess I could call myself. Some sort of American. You know what I'm saying? I, I was born here. You know, I'm not, I do have native blood, but I, I'm not like the natives that was that are the indigenous people to this place. That, that's not us. And that's not, that's not the Caucasians and the Anglo-Saxons walking around here either. They're not the indigenous people here. But based on now, this is unfortunately, I mean, I don't want to really say it like that, but it's their country. Okay? It should be everybody's country, but it's their country, so therefore they get to make the rules and do what they want to do and call the shots and okay, whatever. But a lot of them, they call shots that affect us. They, they call shots that affect us. And when you sell like iconic brands, like things like Smithfield Foods to someone who is not our ally, then what are you doing? You're putting a lot of American lives in jeopardy without really realizing that. That's how I feel about it. Because at any time, China could just say, yo, look, these pigs right here ain't really good like that no more, but we won't. We ain't saying nothing. Why? Because we're fucking China. We don't have to. You never know. It really does. It raises all kinds of questions about national security. I don't know, man. Shit crazy business to me. <laughs> hmm. What else, man? What else? There are, like I said, there are some. I'm going to take a break, though. I think, you know what? I'm going to take a break. And when I come back, I'm going to try and find, I'm going to try to figure out all the countries that don't allow Americans to buy property in their country. You're listening to the Darren Harris Podcast. Sometimes the best thing to celebrate is you. Blue Nile gets that. Scored a promotion? Accessorize that ambition. Going on a big trip? How about some hoops? Ditched a dud? Buy some studs. The point is, you deserve to shine. And Blue Nile has everything you're shopping for, from designer looks to everyday basics. So. Don't be shy. If you need to, just call it self-care. Celebrate you at BlueNile.com. Now, back to the Darren Harris Podcast. What's up, folks? Welcome back to the program. Today, we are talking about America selling America from underneath America. Talking about the selling of American icons, iconic brands, and land to foreign countries, including our enemies. So, before the break, I was going to give everybody a list of places where Americans cannot buy property. But first, I found a list of companies. Excuse me. There's a list of companies that I have that are no longer and you would be surprised you're going to be surprised at some of the co companies that are no longer american owned so back in 2008 
Anheuser-Busch got sold to a Belgian company called InBev. So they are no longer Budweiser. Motherfuckers are like, motherfucking Budweiser. Yes, Budweiser is no longer an American company. And they've been having some issues as of late. Anyway, in the media, I mean, it's it's no longer that iconic American brand. It's something, something. Now, there's still, to me, I mean, but this is just to me. It could be to other people, but to me, Budweiser is now Belgian. It's a Belgian beer. Now, Belgians make better beer than we do. But our namesake, our... Our, our iconic beer, our American beer, the Clydesdales, that whole that whole image is just a thing of the past. I remember when Budweiser, everybody waited for the Budweiser commercial during the Super Bowl. Everybody's waiting for the, what's Budweiser coming out with this year? I really don't think it's that prominent anymore. I really don't think so. Number two is Smithfield Foods. Back in 2013, Smithfield Foods was purchased by a Chinese company, WH Group. And when they did that, that's when people started freaking out. People started talking about the impact of, like, like domestic agriculture and like the food safety and security here in the country because China's not our ally. In 2014, Lenovo, actually in 2012, Google bought Motorola. But in 2014, Google sold Motorola to Lenovo, which is owned by a Chinese company. This hurt my heart right here and before uh, because I'm from New York. The Waldorf Astoria in 2014 was sold to the Anbang Insurance Group. Out of China. Number five, AMC Entertainment. In 2012, AMC Entertainment was sold. It's like one of I mean, it's the one of the largest movie chains. They sold to a conglomerate, Diane One Group. Out of China. In 2012, AMC, the American movie. In cinema, uh, he, uh, yeah, <laughs> gone. Like I said, um, 2008, Anheuser Bush, 2013, Smithfield Foods, uh, 2014, that was a crutch word right there, 2014, Motorola, 2014, also the Waldorf Astoria, Astoria. 2012, AMC, in 1990. Pebble Beach Golf Links was acquired by Japanese investors or investor. Min, I hope I'm saying this. Minoru Itsuani. Minoru Itsuani owns Pebble Beach Golf Links. Gerber Baby Food was bought by Switzerland in 2007. Ben and Jerry's out of Chicago is now out of. I mean, from a day, it's manufactured by Anglo Dutch, uh, by an Anglo, that's what it says, acquired by Anglo Dutch Company. <laughs> Anglo Dutch, huh? White people ice cream. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jeff Peanut Butter. <clears throat> Seven Eleven, also in two thousand and five, Seven Eleven got bought by a Japanese company, 
S it's uh seven and I holdings. This one right here is gonna get y'all also. In nineteen eighty eight Firestone Tire and Rubber Company was purchased by the Japanese. Trader Joe's is now German, along with, um, this really kind of upset me also, Win Dixie. <laughs> Win Dixie. Win Dixie. Win Dixie. The Beef People was acquired by the company, the parent company to Aldi, which is a German company. RCA, the Radio Corporation of America, is now French. <laughs> oh, that's also, that's General Electric also, not just RCA. Legendary entertainment acquired by Chinese and uh, by the Chinese in, 19, in 2016. Martha Stewart Living Ornamental uh, or Ornamedia. There was a few other a few brands that acquired a bunch of different places. I mean, and the list goes on. Fisher Price, T-Mobile is German now. Cadbury. There's a bunch of stuff. There's a bunch of stuff, man. There's a bunch of stuff. I think I think even and this hurt me too because I think even Levi's Levi's is no longer an American company. That that I, I wear Levi's. I'm a Levi's guy. I collect Levi's for a long time. I collect at one point at one time I had over a hundred pairs of Levi's. Yeah, no shit. But hey. Such is life, right? Such is life. And like I said, and this is just for me, folks, and, and please don't take this the wrong way. Or you can't, I mean, I don't give a fuck how you take it. How about that shit? <laughs> but just know that my intentions is not, I'm like I said, I'm not this, this, this foreign person hater. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't, that's not me. It's just, some of it is scary to me because like I said, people who are not our allies are able to come in here and purchase property and companies. Think about it. A lot of us, I know there's a lot of people who didn't know, who did not know that Budweiser was a Belgian company now. I mean, it's probably some people listening to this podcast right now going, what the fuck are you talking about, Budweiser? Yeah, Bud. Bud. That's, that's cool because it's Belgium. <laughs> they don't really have a problem with us. But Smithfield Foods in China and some of this other shit in China and China has bought a lot of American shit and they are not our allies. And while you're, I mean, why you bullshitting Russia too? Russia, Russia, Russia. And we are most definitely not allies with Russia. Think about that. And really, I mean, it's really not, I mean, you can, I mean, buying property here, I mean, it's, I mean, man, it's buy some property in the United States. <laughs> You know what? I'm going to take another quick, fast break. I was in the back eating a slice of cake, and it was getting good to me, and then I realized I was doing a podcast. So I left a little bit of piece of cake out there. I'm going to go eat my little small piece of cake, and when I come back, I will have that list of places where Americans are not allowed to buy 
property or there's like deep restrictions placed on Americans. This is the Darren Harris podcast. I'll be right back. This podcast is sponsored by Talkspace. November is Men's Health Awareness Month. So Talkspace asks you to check in with your male friends, partners, brothers, and any guy you care about. Talkspace therapists say men will open up if they're asked the right questions. Here are some you can ask. If you wake up in the middle of the night, what's on your mind? What's something you enjoyed in the past you wish you had more of in your life today? What are you doing when you feel most satisfied and least stressed? These questions can prompt important mental health conversations and show you care. Talkspace offers men private, convenient online therapy. They can go to Talkspace.com or download the Talkspace app answer a few questions, and be matched with a therapist who they can connect with through messaging or live virtual sessions whenever is most comfortable. Plus, Talkspace accepts most major insurers with a typical copay of $25 or less. No insurance? No problem. Now get $80 off your first month when you go to Talkspace.com. Hey folks, welcome back to the program. <clears throat> Today I'm talking about, well, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, if you've been listening to the program, I don't think anybody, but I'm talking about America selling America from underneath America because that's how we do it here in America. We get money by selling our, our shit. <laughs> that's how we do it. That's right. We sell our shit. Even our, even because I've been saying, Anyone, I've been saying this all podcast, and it's just it just rings and hits home with me, really, really close. I mean, it just really resonates with me. Anyone from any place can buy property in the United States, even our enemies. I don't really even think there's very many restrictions. I think really all you need is the money and to get in touch with Jen down at Remax and you too can own a piece of America. In fact, really, I think it's fairly easy. Well, not for black people or maybe that's changed now. I don't know. Anyway, I have I have compiled a list of places that we cannot buy property even though that they have property are able to buy property in our country now these now keep in mind some places some of these places we can't own property at all other than some of these other places we can own property with restrictions there's certain restrictions that are placed on us on us and some of these some of these places are also places that other foreign nationals can't purchase property also but some of these are Americans <laughs> we can't own property here so without any further ado I got 20 places I got 20 places that we cannot own property number 20 Mexico believe it or don't as my friend would say believe it or not we can't really own Mexico and property. I mean, property in Mexico. Now we can own Mexico uh, property in Mexico, but there are stipulations to owning property in Mexico. We cannot live by the coast, and we have to be. I mean, I'm not exactly sure. I think it's like a hundred miles away from the coast, and like fifty miles from the, or like thirty to fifty miles from the border of Mexico. So we can't. Americans cannot buy property. On the coast, we can't have property on the coast in Mexico. And if, as, as a matter of fact, I think we have to be something dumb like a hundred miles. I could be—I I don't, I don't know, man. Maybe I'm misquoting that, but I, uh, that shit is that shit. Even still, even st Mexico, we can't buy property right next to the border. We can't buy property on the border. Uh, to Mexico, our neighbors. Number 19, Canada. <laughs> yep, our neighbors to the north. And again, 
there are some restrictions that apply in all the like, the different territories of Canada. They they have their different they have different restrictions within their restrictions. So there are restrictions to Americans buying property in Canada. Number eighteen, Vietnam. <laughs> Number seventeen, Honduras. Number sixteen, Turkey. Number fifteen, Armenia. Number fourteen, the Yemen. Number 12, Cuba. Number 11, Nigeria. Number 10, Syria. Number 9, Bulgaria. Yeah, some of those I can I can get. But the next one, number 8, Greece. We can't own property in Greece, man. Really? <laughs> Every word? <laughs> We just, y'all, well, okay then, uh, all right then. We just, just go visit and, and turn the fuck around and go home then. And then we got Portugal. I think that's number seven. Number six is Hungary. Number five is Slovakia. We are down to number four, the Czech Republic. Number three. I mean, no, this is, this is number four. Romania is number four. Now, this shit right here almost halfway pisses me off right here. Mm -mm. Number three, the Ukraine. We can't own property in Ukraine, motherfucker. <laughs> For real. We just, I mean, we send y'all millions of dollars in weapons. We send y'all millions of dollars in weapons. I mean, we could have used that money to feed homeless people or something here. I mean, really? And don't get me wrong. I'm all for aid to our allies. I'm all for that. I'm all for diplomacy. I'm all for that. But motherfucker, if you could buy property here, we damn sure better be able to buy property in your fucking country. Period. That's how the fuck I feel about it. For real. I don't give a fuck who it is. I don't give a fuck who it is. Number two. <laughs> this is no big secret. Russia. You damn right. We don't own no property in Russia. And Russia has. They got property here. They got tons of property here. They got tons of property here. Russians come to America and do really well. As a matter of fact, they do really well here. The ones that I know, I mean, I have some Russian friends. And like I said, Russian friends, they're friends. And those same Russian friends, they have friends from the Ukraine. These are all my friends in New York, friends in New York. They have friends that are Ukrainian. And really... Like I said last week, I have friends that are Jewish and Palestinians that are friends also. And the number one place that we are not allowed to buy property, China. <laughs> we cannot have property in China, folks. We just can't do it. We cannot... We might have an embassy there or some shit, but we don't have no, no. And like I said, that's just so sad. It's so sad because there's some cool shit in China that I've just been seeing on TikTok and Instagram and all on the little Instagram feeds and on the reels. And listen, some of these places I really want to go hit up. I really do. But I don't think I'm ever going to get a chance to. So that's unfortunate. And that's a motherfucking shame at the end of the day. So. It is what it is, though, folks, right? So at the end of the day, this, and this, and I'm going to leave you guys with this. At the end of the day, like I said before, I don't have a problem with that. I just want America to be safe. I just want where I live to be safe. And also, I want, I mean, the things that I've grown up with, you know, the things... I want them to, to still hold that nostalgia. I still want them to hold that significance in my life. Like 
you know, the first time, the first time, like I went to the a the movies was at an AMC. First time I ever took a girl to the movies was to an AMC movie theater, you know, and I don't know, especially, I mean, I don't know, even things that with, with America in the name owned by other people, that shit, that shit is baffling to me. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, listen, folks, I just, I, I, I think this, I think we just need to, to slow down and assess the things that we do in this country and really keep our country or, I mean, try and keep our country as safe as we can. I mean, like I said, at the end of the day, I live here. You know, I've done podcasts about going back to Africa and all that stuff, and it would be nice, but I, I, I'm from here. I live here, and I want here to be safe on all fronts. The food front, the real estate front, the whatever clothes I put on my body front. I mean, I don't know. There's not a lot of regulations. A lot of places, they don't have the same reg. I won't say that. They don't have the same regulations, and not for nothing. Our regulations aren't the end-all, be-all anyway, especially our food regulations. So that's another podcast, but... <clears throat> All right, folks, I think that's going to wrap it up for me here at the Darren Harris Podcast. Thank you very much for joining me this week. Woo! Um, I want to thank my mother. That was a crutch word. I want to thank my mom and my dad. And mom, I'm sorry. 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 Anyway. I want to thank my parents. I have great parents. I really do. I have, I have wonderful parents. And they have always been supportive of me. And because of that, I'm able to sit here and do this. And I have the confidence now because of my wife that I also would like to thank. I have the confidence to sit here and do this for you folks. I want to thank my wife also. I want to thank my best friend, which is also my producer, Jesse Yandel, for throwing down, my man. Thank you very much. And I also want to thank Gentry Thomas, man. Hang in there, homie. It's coming, bro. Um, Yeah, I want to thank Gentry Thomas for giving us this platform, the podcast playground, to do our stuff on, to share our opinions and to get our voices out and to connect with people and to learn from people, educate people, but also to learn from people. And like I said, man, hit me in the DMs if you guys want to talk about something specific, if you got a, a, a certain topic you want me to cover, if you want to talk about something, let me know, man. I'm always open to it. So until next time, I'm Darren Harris. This is the Darren Harris Podcast. I will see y'all ass next week. Peace. You've been listening to the Darren Harris Podcast. Subscribe to the show, give a good rating, and everything you need to know is at DarrenHarris.com.